Hello, hello. I'm Miles and I'm Deanna. And welcome to our van. We uh, we call her Meg. This is a Ford E250, a 2012 model. Um, and yeah, my buddy uh, bought uh, sold it to me for a really good price. And it was just a working van. He was a backsplasher, so it's had like some, you know, grout here and there, some paint that we just like gutted everything out and just started from scratch. Just started from the flooring here, which we actually use underneath it. It's like an OSB foam uh, combination and it has ridges on the bottom of it just to allow the air flow a little bit better. Um, and then we just went with a uh, good old like uh, linoleum type flooring as well. Here's our, our cabinetry here and it's it was a pretty easy build actually. Uh, what I did was just use two by twos for the framing of it. Um, and then we use this pretty inexpensive material. It's like a plywood underlayment for the walls as well as the face of the doors here. Uh, kind of a neat design that I kind of made up on the fly here. Just a basic picture frame with ripping just different thicknesses of material for the middle here. And we reused some hardware as well. Uh, keeping it very very on the cheap So we keep a lot of our clothes storage here as you can see Here we have a nice little wee pantry cabinet Which we just store miscellaneous stuff and you know what in a small space like this storage is key And what do you know we even have oopsie a hanging closet? <clears throat> you wouldn't expect that in a van, but hey we thought of it and it happened and underneath here, we originally had like a porta potty, but with some technical difficulties, uh, we ended up just taking it out and using it as storage. Um, right now, we have a, a funnel system for our, uh, for our toilets, and it's been working out all right for us. And so. And what do you mean by a funnel system? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's a uh, basically uh, just a, a jug with a. Um, a funnel in it and just for being and we make sure to stay at places that they actually do have um, they do have toilets there so we are able to you know go number two whenever we want but for those midnights where you know you had a couple of beers or whatever you nature calls and you don't want to disturb the neighbors at all of course so back here we have our couch that also converts into our bed um, so what I ended up doing was I got a couple of foam pieces just from the fabric store and then I upholstered our own cushions so they would fit perfectly and this is actually like a full double bed so that's really nice and all it is is a slat system so when we're ready for bed then we just pull this out and then this top cushion here just pulls down just right beside me here and we end up just shoving all of our blankets and stuff behind it just for easy storage so we ended up having to do our bed this way because um, miles is actually too tall to sleep width wise here so it was actually it turned out pretty well because we have this long hallway here it allows us more space for cooking um, which I do a lot of so that's uh, kind of nice to have extra space so for our lighting we did these little puck lights that we just got from Amazon so they just each take three uh, AAA batteries which we um, recharge all the time the reason why we did that was because we didn't have a battery system at first so then this way we were able to just charge the batteries through our um, starter battery of the van for our kitchen sink, we just have basically a stainless steel bowl, which we got from the dollar store. So anytime we need to empty that, we just kind of go outside and do that in like a bush or wherever we can. Our sink is just battery powered. We also got that from Amazon. All you do is just push a button to get it started and then push a button to turn it off. So that's really nice when, I may, when I'm washing my face. I don't have to like be pumping water at the same time. It doesn't really work that well. And that is just hooked up to a um, 19 liter water tank under here. 
which we can just fill at the grocery store if we need to, so it's really easy. And uh, it's nice too, because we don't have any gray water to deal with. Well, up here, we just have some more supplies. Um, we have some supplies for cups and spices, all that good stuff. It's just, it doesn't take up too much space, but it allows for a lot of extra storage with these small upper cabinets. And then under here, we have a lot of food storage. Garbage is under here and also our dish bin. Um, we don't do our dishes in that little tiny sink. It doesn't work very well. So yeah, we have a dish bin that makes it a lot easier for us. Our barbecue here, which we strap in with bungee cords for when we're driving. This is nice because it's um, a half a barbecue and then a half um, a propane burner. And then what we do for the propane is we just hide the propane under this cabinet here. We also just installed a house battery, which has made it a lot easier on our starter battery because we didn't want to be using that as much to recharge our phones, our laptop, our um, batteries for our puck lights. So this is actually hooked up to a AGM battery that's just right underneath the bed here. And then we just have these little 12 volt plugins that we can use with small inverters. So we have a 300 watt inverter here or a little 75 watt inverter. This one usually works the best because it's smaller. We just plug that in and then we have room to plug in our laptop. Our battery is about 92 amp hours. So it's not too much, but it's enough for us because we're not running huge appliances. So we charge our our house battery by using a solenoid isolator with our starter battery. So that's all we've needed to do so far because we don't end up having to use our house battery as much. Um, and that's actually worked really well. Like right now we're at 12.8 volts. So it's it's been pretty good for us. For, uh, for heating in the van, we wanted to go with diesel heat. So we bought the cheapest diesel heater online. It was like a Chinese heater. And we, we thought, hey, you know, we built a tiny house. We renovated this van. How hard could a diesel heater be, right? So we had so many issues with like diesel leaks, um, blowing, and the main thing was um, it was blowing out white smoke, which meant that it wasn't actually burning the diesel. We hooked up this thing, worked on it for like a, a month and a half, troubleshooting, and eventually we just said, hey, we're spending way too much time on this heater than enjoying ourselves, going to the beach, hanging out with our friends, um, so we just ended up taking the whole thing back and hopefully they'll reimburse us with a new one. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, all the holes are drilled and everything. So it should just be a quick setup just to hook up this new one. That's probably had some defects from the factory because, um, there's actually Facebook groups dedicated to troubleshooting this heater. So <laughs> it's a pretty notorious thing. The, uh, with the actual plywood, it's a very cheap plywood. It cost us about 13 bucks for a four by eight sheet, um, which was really nice to have a thinner plywood because it actually hugged the contours of the van, which helped a lot with space and whatnot. Um, and yeah, I just uh, used self-tapping screws to tap into the parts of the van that were a bit proud, just to tie it all in. Uh, and also with parts like, um, over here in this wall, if you want to sneak around here. Uh, I had to make sure to use a cardboard template because you wanted to hug the curve of the wall and people, uh, they call that scribing. So I suggest when you are doing anything that involves curves, you know, people in marine, like in boats and stuff, always have to deal with this. Uh, try to use a cardboard template and then that way can get the most accurate cut. For the uh, upper cabinets here, how I constructed them was I added a couple of cleats here that I tied into the van here and here. And then from there, you just build a very simple cabinet. So for these pieces right here, we actually didn't have any windows there beforehand. So what I ended up doing was uh, just getting some Reflectix and covering it with some uh, leftover material that we had from our tiny house build. Um, with the back, I can show you the curtains. Mm -hmm. I actually did make some curtains for back there. 
I just ended up using a darker fabric for the back to kind of block out the sun and then a lighter fabric for the front and then I just sewed in some magnets. So that was just a really easy way to be able to just attach them like this when we are sleeping and then when we are ready to go on the road then we just attach them at the bottom like that. So we decided to uh, move into a van because um, our RV park in Collingwood, Ontario was closing down for the winter. So we had to figure out something to do, um, somewhere to live, somewhere to work. Um, we had previously lived in a van about five years ago and we had just completely fell in love with it. So we thought that um, a good idea would be to maybe convert our own van um, since we had kind of the experience under our belt from the tiny house. And then um, we decided to come out to Victoria, BC, because it's the mildest place in Canada that we could think of. Um, so it's been, uh, it's been a pretty nice place to live in a van. The fact that you are mobile frees up a lot of options. You know, if you're not liking your neighbor, if you can just leave. Also a big factor of it was financial factors too, because we know people that are working full-time jobs just making ends meet to pay the rent. I, I feel like nowadays our generation's really hard to like, um, you know, um, uh, grind it out and, and buy a house and even have children and everything's, everything's an expense. And I feel like, you know, us, like I'm 31 mm -hmm. now and we, we, own, we own our house and we have this awesome getaway place that we can just, you know, take it to uh, Muskoka one day if we want to take a daytime trip if there's like a trip in Toronto like a concert that we want to go to we don't mm -hmm. have to spend money at an Airbnb we can just hang out in the van I feel like it's really great to have both um, the tiny house and the van because we, although we can move the tiny house it does it's um, a lot heavier and we need like a special truck to move it um, with the van we can just pick up and go it's basically a, a smaller um, it's basically a smaller version of our house. I actually like uh, the benefits of going to a um, friend, a uh, friend's house while we're downtown, parked, and not having to worry about driving home per chance. Like you can just like go in your van if you're mm -hmm. like drinking at all, if you're like smoking, you can just be like, hey, you know, I'm just parked over here. There's no worries. I don't, you know, don't have to worry about getting a hotel <laughs> or anything. Um, it's also super cost effective. Right now we're just paying $150 a month to park in a parking lot. So that's a lot cheaper than rent. Um, although it did cost us, you know, a bit of money to buy the van, we'd still have to basically have a vehicle anyways. So we put that money towards the van and the van build. Um, and now it's just really cost effective for us to be able to live and we don't really even have to have full-time jobs right now We both just work about uh, 30 hours a week. A big challenge was we didn't expect um, Victoria or like over in the island here to be so wet So we were dealing with a bit of mold issues happening mm -hmm. um, And one mistake that I made was I didn't treat any of the wood on the insides of the cabinets so one day you know it, it all happens at once you look underneath or you look in a cabinet you notice a bit of mold you're like okay just a little bit of mold next thing you know you look in another cabinet you look in another cabinet you have to take the whole thing apart and, mm -hmm. and paint it so uh, that was that was a big challenge for us the uh, heater it was really hard to deal with when you have kind of a whole messy van um, with diesel spilling everywhere and we're trying to get this heater installed and then we're also living in that space so it's kind of hard to um, do upgrades and things like that without having a proper shop or a another proper place to stay. Our bathroom <clears throat> situation isn't great. We always have to kind of use public bathrooms. Um, so that's kind of just been an adjustment. It, has, it hasn't been a huge struggle, um, but it is kind of nice to be able to have a bathroom easily accessible because the place that we park, the bathrooms close at five. So we kind of have to work around that. You know, you just have to be kind of open-minded about things. And um, you know, if there's a will, there's a way. 
one thing that I would suggest doing if you are in um, a small city or a big city is maybe hooking up with some other people that also live in vans. There's a lot of them out there. You probably see them driving around all the time. There's probably some good social media groups for you to join up with. Um, there's a lot of great people out there doing this. And if you're able to connect with some of them, uh, maybe they'll give you a tour of your van. Everyone that I've met has been super friendly. Um, so it's it's probably a good idea to get a good feel of the space that you'll need. Um, so do you cook? Do you do art? Do you um, need a lot of space for a certain hobby? Uh, because you'll want to make sure that your van has the space for that. And then also, you know, you might have to give up on some things. Like for us, we had to give up on the height factor just because we didn't have the funds to buy a high top van. So. You just have to kind of think of what you need and what you may or may not be able to give up on. Um, but yeah, hooking up with a community would be really great. Um, some good advice I'd have to say, especially with couples, is like you need to be very comfortable with each other. Like Deanna and I, we've met each other like when we're 14 years old. Yeah, we've spent half our lives together. And, mm -hmm. you know, there's lots of different aromas that can happen <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, you know, you don't judge the person. It's human nature. Get uh, used to each other's scents first. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's definitely um, uh, it's a good trial for a relationship, I'd say. I actually think it's meant for a lot of people. Like you know, we actually we haven't really seen anybody married um, on our uh, journey here. But I'd say um, somebody who just got out of high school wants to explore uh, mm -hmm. the country. I'd say that's the best way. Uh, it's like yeah. somebody young, you know, doesn't have too many health concerns. Um, doesn't mind being snug like a bug in a rug in a in a van here. Mm -hmm. So, someone who's open-minded, um, someone who's able to kind of use their skills for other jobs, um, because a lot of the time it's hard to um, get a normal job while living in a van. Although it's possible, you know, we have normal jobs too. But um, yeah, it's someone who's open-minded for sure and willing to and willing to try new things. We've always been sort of minimalist. We don't like to have a lot of things. Um, so when we decided to build a tiny house, that was kind of, you know, we were already on that mindset. We didn't have to get rid of a lot of things. Um, so right now with the van, we are lucky enough to be able to have the house that we can store a lot of our things at, although there isn't too much there. But the transition uh, from the house to the van was actually pretty easy because we had previously lived in a van before for about eight months, uh, we kind of knew what we were getting ourselves into. The only thing I think that took an adjustment for me was the head height. It's kind of odd to um, like get changed and also a little bit odd to cook sitting down, but it's just something that you kind of get used to. I, I'd say actually a big adjustment is the cooler because we always have to make sure it has fresh ice in it. Um, and that's one thing that can be overlooked over time. Also, um, constantly getting water um, because we mm. don't really like to pay for it all the time. We um, use like a four liter jug of water to fill up our water tank. That's been a little bit of an adjustment. If you had to sum up, what would your personal philosophy on life be? <laughs> mm, that's a good question. Oh man. <laughs> I'll let you take the first one. I'll get one up. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> personal like, philosophy yeah, of you... life. Um, I'd say, uh, uh, hmm. I was, I was yeah, hoping I when I said I minutes. say that something would just come up. <laughs> <laughs> Smile a lot. I, I think good sense of humor is really important, especially when you are, you know, dealing with the restrictions that you do have to deal with when you are living in a van here. So uh, have a sense of humor. Yeah. Smile a lot and be mild mannered. Yeah. Yeah. What about you, Odie? I'd say um, do what you love to do. Don't stay focused on finding the right job or finding the right house or finding the right spi the right spouse. Um, just kind of focus on what you love and go for that. Um, you can make it work if you put your mind to it. I, I like the idea of um, having it be a surprise because I feel like that's one thing we all have in common is we're on an adventure. You're always, each day is different. You don't know what's going to happen, where you're going to park. 
Um, and we get so caught up with the nine to five all the time that it's nice to have this like um, spontaneousness that we do. You don't want to like, you know, like that Pink Floyd song, Time, you know, shut your eyes one day and wake up in your 40 the next day. Where did all my years go by? Mm -hmm. And I feel like when you're traveling, time has a bit more substance to it. Shout out to Roaming with the Reeds with Miles and Dee here. Uh, check us out on Instagram and Facebook there. Um, yeah, you, you can watch our, watch our invent, adventures as well as uh, see some of our tiny house uh, pictures as well if you're mm -hmm. interested. Hey everybody, it's Forrest the Filmmaker. Hope you guys enjoyed that episode of Alternative Dwellings. If you want to see more, playlists are popping up right now where you can watch all of our archived episodes. Or if you want to see new ones, make sure to subscribe because they premiere at 7.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time every single Monday. Hope to see you guys there.